Derek uh, had such great success again in the first half on Sunday. What's happening there in that second half, and how frustrating is it when when you all have had some good first halves these last couple weeks? Um, yeah, we just you know shooting ourselves in the foot, and um, you know just just the little things, and I feel like we clean that up, and we'll strive for it and do what we want to do in the second half. But just you know working on it and fixing it when we're out here. Feel like the unit has maybe gained some momentum, maybe in the running game over the last couple of weeks. I guess with the first half success. Yeah, I mean this, um, you know, should be encouraged, you know, by the success that we had and moving guys off the ball. But I think you should want more and stay hungry. Players that they have from Alabama feel like old home week for you this week when you go up there. If I was talking to them, it'd probably be like team run again. I got so many. So you know, back when I was in at Bama, going and team run against those guys. So yeah. Have you gotten to know Brian Robinson any, I guess, from maybe your visit to Tuscaloosa? And have you kind of followed him and, and hoped he got better after his his incident earlier this year? Yeah, um, I talked to him when he was at Bama and, um, you know, kept a rela- uh, relationship with him. And, you know, um, you know, just whenever he was he was there playing throughout the season and, you know, when he got drafted and, you know, getting back to being able to play football now. So, yeah, we, we talk all the time. How, how incredible is that story, Derek, you know, of him? Being able to come back so quickly from you know significant situation. There. Oh yeah, I seen somewhere he said he's a varsity king, so I'm sure you know it was nothing to him but just back, just, just getting back into into the swing of things after something like that, you know, happened to him. But you know, I'm just glad that he's able to play football and do something that he loves. You were pretty frustrated coming off the field. The, the interview you did with TV you talked about kind of being unsatisfied with the way things unfolded in the, in the whole game in the second half. And then after Mike kind of gave you guys the theme and the message, spoke spoke differently. How important the messaging from him after the game? I mean, he's a head man, so if he doesn't do something, that's how, that's how it goes. I mean, that's simple. Derek, Coach Frazier said yesterday you hold yourself to a high standard, very respectful of that, and he believes the team has high respect for that too. Have you noticed yourself being more critical of your performance this year than maybe last year? No, I'm always, always been the same way. I'm, a, I'm my worst critic, and that's how it's always been since I've been playing this game. Do you, when you, when you're not satisfied, I guess, do you go back and watch the the game film particularly critically? Do you just kind of replay things in your head? How do you, how do you work yourself through that? I guess. Uh, I do that after the play is over. So we in the game, and after the play, I'm, I critique myself at. At any time, it don't really matter if it's after the game, during the game. I'm always doing that. It's constantly what I do. How do you kind of move on from play to play? Like like the camera showed you on the sideline after the after the catch. I think you thought you should have, and, and you were clearly a little frustrated. How do yeah. you get that out of your mind? Move on next play, kind of thing. Um, it's hard. Um, I don't really think I do. I think you just gotta go out there and play, and you know, try your best to get over it and go out there and make a play. But I still think about it now, so. Are we working on it today to get better? Do you, do you run angry at times? Like, do, does that help you, or do you do, are you kind of in the same mindset throughout a game? You think? I mean, when you don't make a play you should make, I'm sure you're angry. So, I mean, I guess if you want to call it that, but I'm always gonna run the same and do what I can to make a play. Coach Dusa so said that you know he coaches you guys not to expect a home run on every play, but, you know, it's still there at times. Like, how do you balance that, like trying to get those long runs but not pressing too much to, to get them? Yeah, I think you, you just don't press and just go out there and play and do that play and try to execute as, as much as you, you can. And if it's there, you know, hit it. And if it happens, it happens. But I don't think you try to press too much and think about it. Then you take yourself out of your game. I think you just go, you know, let the game come to you. And he also commented about the importance of you guys setting blocks up and, and you know making sure that everything is is you're in the right spot, so to speak. Is that something that you feel happened a lot uh, last week and going forward? Well, I mean, it's all tied in together in the run game blocks and the things the, thing, the things that we do. And um, you know, as long as every guy do their job and you know, I do mine, then we should have to have a successful play. But, you know, like I always say, it starts out here. So we got to take care of this first and then they lead on to Sunday. In that, game last, in that game last week against the Colts, it looked like you were close to breaking the big one. Did, did you get that feeling that, you know, that's coming at any point? Or is that just something that happened and you surprised yourself? Um, I don't really try to get, 
think too much into it. I mean, if it happens, it happens. The players there try to make the play and go to the next play and, you know, just keep playing. How much are you enjoying spinning things into to the passing game as kind of a supplement to, to the run, especially when the, the run isn't going? Oh, yeah, it's been fun. It's got to catch the ball. So, yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> when you go back and look at those two that, that you, you didn't pull in, did you find some common thread there? Yeah, I just get a little excited, you know, because like you said, it doesn't happen often, and I just got to look the ball in and catch it and, you know, try to make a play. After games, do you find yourself beating yourself up more for maybe plays you didn't make? Than, I guess Say it again? I said after games, do you find yourself beating yourself up more for plays you didn't make than maybe some of the, the good ones you had? That's every game. Every game, I'm always the same. I'm always critiquing myself. And if it's a good play, I feel like it could have been better. If it's a bad play, well, it was terrible. So that's just how it is. What is uh, uh, Haskins doing so, that's making him so effective on kickoffs right now? Yeah, I think he's uh, obviously understanding what we're trying to execute on our kickoff return. Uh, he understands that he's got to catch the ball and we got to run vertical with it. And he does a really good job, obviously, of seeing the blocks and how we're trying to get everything um, taken care of as far as double teams and single blocks. So uh, we'll continue to work with him, try to get him better, not only on kickoff return, but also punt. Um, he's doing a good job for us. He had a big time open field tackle on Hines, um, you know, in the fourth quarter. So we're really proud of him, the way he's really um, got better each and every single week. He doesn't have a lot of return experience. Yeah. I mean, how sort of remedial have the lessons had to be with him along the way here? I mean, we had to start slow with him, but, uh, you know, he's improved every single week, and the guys out here each and every day early catching kickoffs. Um, you know, our biggest thing that we're going to continue to work with him is trying to catch the ball with forward momentum, not really trying to go off to the side and try to catch the ball, but try to catch the ball with a little bit forward momentum because it's going to help out our blocks even more when that happens. Ryan indicated that uh, <clears throat> in the first half, he thought there was sufficient time for, for the field goal unit to do its thing. W was there sufficient time? Uh, you know, we always expect us to no matter what the time is to go out there and execute it. Um, what we're trying to look for is the official to give us a signal, whether it's first or fourth down. Um, that's the one thing that we're going to try to do every single time. We didn't get that from him until late when the official gave finally the fourth down signal. Uh, we just got to do a better job of going out there. Obviously, if we're coming in on an angle, we don't want to hit our kicker or our punter who's going to be our holder. So uh, 19 seconds, we should have time to go out there and execute some stuff. We just got to make sure that official gives us a first or fourth down because if we get caught in a situation where he signals for first down, but it's really fourth, and we put our field goal unit out on there on the field, that's going to cause some um, confusion on that part. So we'll continue to find that official, see what signal he gives us, and we'll go out and execute next time better. In that situation, seconds, though? Is that, is that at the, whenever the play is ruled down, that's the 19 seconds? Is that when the clock kind of starts? Or? Uh, so the 19 seconds when the play initially starts, that's when we look at it, and we feel like 19 seconds should be enough time for us to go out there. Shouldn't you assume the worst, that it's fourth down, and rather than wait for the official to presume it's a first yeah. down? I wouldn't necessarily say that because if we assume it's fourth down and we start running our guys out there and then all of a sudden he signals for a first down, now we've got five or six guys coming from our field goal team out there. Our offense will be saying clock, clock, clock because it's first down. And that's the part we don't want to create is that confusion. We want to definitely see if it's going to be a first or fourth down signal in order for us to get those guys out. As Kyle gets healthier, do you try to incorporate him back maybe in the punt return or, or you stay maybe how as is? Uh, you know, I think uh, the most important thing is we got to continue to catch the ball, which Robert has done a good job. We'll continue to work with Kyle on that and hopefully gain him uh, the confidence that he had during, um, you know, the off season and during training camp. Do you think his confidence has lacked there in a little bit, just having some of those reps not go his way? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, you know, hopefully there's no self-doubt with him, but I'm sure as a player you're thinking, man, I got to go back there and catch the ball, um, you know, with confidence, um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say that his confidence is shot. Um, you know, it's just probably going him getting in there and getting a bunch more reps, and then he'll feel more comfortable uh, doing it again for us. Is it frustrating that you're standing there saying, we have to continue to catch the ball as opposed to catch it? And then get some yards. 
Sure. Um, you know, when Robert did have a chance two weeks ago, um, you know, when he did catch the ball and he had that opportunity to go make some things happen, he gained 21 yards. So we didn't really get an opportunity last week. Um, I know there was a fair catch, and then the other one was a 19-yard punt OB. So, um, you know, if we have those opportunities to take advantage of it, we definitely got to do that. Todd, how, how nice does it help the offense when Henry is making catches? I mean, he's, you know, first two games, no catch. He, I think he's got eight now combined over these last two games. How valuable is he uh, in that part of the game? Yeah, we love getting the ball in his hands any way that we can, and especially when we're, you know, trying to take some of these play action shots and all that and they sink into coverage. Getting a check down to him is just like handing the ball against a good box. So. Uh, we'll take it anytime we can. But he's done a nice job in the past game and a couple of good screens, too. So that's been nice. He really puts the work in, too, right? I mean, you see, we see him at the jug machine all the time during training camp and all that. I mean, he really does put the work in to try to be a better pass receiver, right? He does. And then if something happens to go awry or he has a hiccup, he works really hard to kind of put that to bed and get those reps, um, you know, throughout the course of special teams or, or practice with Ryan. So, yeah. Yeah, it bothers me that uh, those those guys aren't able to enjoy um, you know the success and and kind of the experience of having a a more comfortable uh, second half. You know, I think we've done some really good things in the first half, and I think that uh, we're we're just on the cusp of breaking through and having a really efficient second half as well. We're just a couple plays here and there. Uh, my only frustration with it is that I think those guys work hard enough that they uh, they deserve to enjoy some fourth quarters. I guess run game specifically, you have had a lot of success run the ball first half, maybe not as much second half. Is it just breakdowns maybe there as well that are keep holding you up? Yeah, I think a couple factors in that. Obviously, you know, uh, not gaining first downs doesn't give you the ability to, to repeat runs in the second half. And I think that that's something that we've done well in the first half is we'll come back to runs and make minor adjustments or Derek sees the read again or a combination gets a second chance to fit it. And if you don't gain first downs in the second half, you don't have that opportunity to repeat runs like that. Uh, and then secondly, we've just got to be more efficient with our opportunities. You know, we have a couple of couple of hiccups that cause some uh, inefficient runs. And, you know, if we can get those straightened out, I think think we'll start to take off. If Traylon isn't able to go, how much confidence do you have in these guys to win those matchups on the outside? Like, take that personally. And, and make teams pay for it, for that. It's a great opportunity for these guys. It, it really is to go out there and uh, you know show what they can do in one-on-one -on -one situations. And uh, I think it's been great to watch the process this year, off-season training camp. Those guys getting a lot of time on task with Ryan. Uh, you know, having an understanding of where Ryan expects them to be and how he expects them to come out of the top of the route. So I'm excited for these guys' opportunity and and see what competitive spirit they have. Last third down pass there to Chig. Uncommon formation, uncommon sort of play. Is that something, I mean, things like that, are they in the playbook that you just sort of wait for a particular time, or do you dial something up like that and draw it up during the week and put it in? Yeah, a lot of those plays are maybe a concept that we have out of a more traditional formation, and then we just uh, tweak it or modify the, uh, you know, the concept to, to get Chig in the right spot. You know, the defense doesn't know what formation you're in or who's aligned where until you actually break the huddle and line up there. So sometimes it's off of a personnel grouping that, you know, you might want to show one thing and then do the other. So I, I think that's kind of a, a situational, um, you know, adaptation, if you will. Some of the explosive plays that you guys have had in the past game have obviously come off of play action. Do you need to kind of have guys win more one-on-ones in the straight drop back game to kind of balance that and, and give yourself more overall balance in the pass game? It depends a little bit on coverage. If it's a big man game, then yeah, you, you've got to win some one-on-one -on -one matchups and we got to help them you know, get in positions to get open with catch and run opportunities and things like that. If it's a zone game, then it's really about having that feel for where you fit in the zone. It may not be you beating a certain defender. You have to beat them to the spot, or you have to feel that softness in the spot. So it uh, kind of depends a little bit defensively, but there's definitely a, a win your job element uh, you know, to converting and to winning and when it's drop back. Perfect situation. What, what should have happened is the easiest thing for, for Tannehill to throw the ball away once he's feeling pressure, or is there a better 
alternative there? I think there's always some retroactive, you know, easiest decision. I, I think there were a lot of unique factors in that because he scrambled for what he thought was the first down, which would put us in a position where we could then get up and clock the ball. Uh, where he was tackled was right at the sticks, so there was some indecision on the spot and whether it was a first down or not. So, uh, you know, we worked diligently here to try to cover as many situations as we can. That one was, uh, I don't know, what's uh, a superfecta of, of unique situations. So uh, I can certainly help by, you know, trying to get outbreaking routes or, you know, uh, going with something a, a, a little more uh, one and done on the read. Um, but, you know, we, we were close to what we wanted there. Would you have Chantrelin have gotten the play before that? Chantrelin have gotten out of bounds maybe instead of trying to get an extra yard or two? Or? You'd always love to stop the clock as opposed to um, you know fight for a yard. So. You've had some success with uh, getting Derek outside, the swing pass early on, that touchdown that got called back, and setting up wide receivers blocking for him. How have you felt about wide receivers and blocking on the second level and their ability, how important has that been too to getting Derek going more and maybe hitting some of those home run runs? Yeah, those guys, that whole group has really played selfless football uh, this year for us and they've done a great job blocking on the perimeter. I thought the timing on that swing screen was absolutely excellent. Uh, you know, Jeff Swaim did a nice job of fitting that block as well without it being, you know, offensive pass interference. And I know when in is a run, but you gotta be careful there. Uh, you know, not blocking while the ball's in the air. And I think Nick Westbrook, you know, and Cody Hollister and Robert Woods and Traylon and all those guys have had their opportunities. Even Kyle, when he's been asked to block out there, have all done, done an excellent job of saying, my man's not going to make the tackle. And uh, when we play that way as an offense, we play efficiently, we move the football. We've got to make sure that that translates to every area, not just blocking for Derek in space. I'm sure you'd like guys to be running wide open, but can separation be, I don't want to say overrated, but you've got a quarterback capable of making tight window throws. Are you satisfied in some circumstances if a guy's just just got enough for a tight window throw and, and the separation thing? Absolutely. Maybe? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. NFL open is not four or five yards of separation, right? NFL open is in a place where you can catch the ball, even in a contested situation, but you know the ball's out in front of you and you can catch it in front of your eyes. So we can't um, search for these times where guys are just running scot-free, right? We need to be able to create separation, maybe with rubs and picks, things of that nature, where we're able to get guys access and then make tight contested catches for sure. That teams are playing, you know, your receivers. It's clear you got big physical receivers. You guys work on combat catches. When it's one on one out there, no safety over top. I mean, would you like to see more checks? Like, hey, you know, go to that fade, go to that nine route. Is that something that you want the guys to do more? I think some of it is situational. You know, I think when you're dealing with some pressures and things like that, you know, you you have some opportunities to to use some checks. Uh, and then I think, you know, we talked about the play pass earlier. Sometimes it's got to fit within the quarterback's timing and drop and, and things of that nature. So we're always looking for ways to attack down the field. Uh, we want to be able to put our guys in the best position possible based on their skill set and their abilities. Uh, and that's just an ongoing process and a challenge for me to see how can we push this ball down the field uh, more consistently. Play caller, though, you know, when they're doing that, is that something that you take personally for your guys who are out there? Because, I mean, it yeah. is a form of disrespect. Yeah, you, all, you always want to try to stoke that competitive fire, right, and say, hey, they're, they're putting you on an island over there. It's mano y mano who's going who's gonna to come down with it. So, absolutely. What's the difference in Nate Davis from last year to this year? It seems like he's been – much improved in terms of being both a run blocker and a pass protector. Yeah, I think another year under his belt, more experience. You know, he's he's seen more, he's he's lived more, uh, and I think that he's really dedicated to taking it one snap at a time and maybe putting either good or bad behind him and just going on to the next play. So, uh, you know, very pleased with Nate and, and the way that he's uh, stepped up in a leadership role. And he, I mean. Believe it or not, he's a vet now, you know, so he's uh, he's got to help uh, with some of the youth we have up there, and, and uh, you know, it's been fun to watch. What have you seen in terms of, of Josh Gordon's progress since he's come along, and I guess the reason for him maybe not, you know, playing last week as opposed to uh, the, the previous two weeks, what, were, what went into that decision too? 
Yeah, uh, as far as who's up and who's down and all that, I'll leave that to Coach Vrabel to, to talk to you guys about uh, those decisions. I'll speak on Josh and, and his work habits here. He's been uh, you know, working diligently to get more and more comfortable with the offense. I think he's getting in better and better shape, understanding how we want to do things. Uh, I think he's growing in his kind of width and breadth of understanding the offense, so he's not just a single position player. So uh, like the work that he's putting in, and I think that you know when and if his number gets called, he'll he'll be ready to contribute. How long has maybe the, the chick play been in the works? How many times? How long have you practiced that as a coordinator? How do you pick the time? Hey, we're gonna gonna use this play. Which one? The the last the, the, play of the, the game. The late one. Yeah. yeah. Five, about five days. I was uh, marinating about five days. Yeah. Just in for the Colts. Yeah. Game and uh, how when you're working a play like that and it works at the right time. I mean how. Good as that as a sell as an offensive coordinator. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh, looking for those small victories. So I celebrated that one a little bit. I was I was excited to see that play executed and uh, and us be able to kneel on the football. You know, obviously we want to uh, perform better in the second half, but any game that you tell me we get to knee on it to uh, you know end the game, I'll take it. Shay. Uh so many different starters, uh, most in the NFL on the defensive side. Uh, how much, I mean, obviously you have experience from this last year, but getting these guys mixed in so many so soon in four games, what's been the biggest challenge in getting this group to solidify? Yeah, I think uh, ultimately always it's, it's the communication aspect of it, the scheme, making sure guys understand their role in the scheme and we're all on the same page, right? Like whatever we're defending, whatever – is called um, making sure 11 guys know how to execute it together as one unit. And I think I think that's the biggest thing we got to work on week in and week out, different guys, different faces, um, guys. Some guys talk more, some guys talk less. Um, but making sure we're putting an emphasis on that throughout the week um, just so they all feel comfortable come Sunday. How's the communication been in, in, the, in the back end? Uh, I'm thinking of McCreary on, on some of the crossers where it seems like He's worried or concerned about traffic that maybe isn't really there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. When you play man coverage, that's something they're always going to do to try to create that traffic you're, you're asking about uh, in the picks. I think it's always something we got to be be on the same page with out there because um, we can play those things different ways. Um, but in terms of the, the crosser, the one that showed up the other day was just leverage, and I think that's – Coverage wise in the passing game, that's what's been showing up. It's been it's been our discipline and coverage, being able to execute whatever type of coverage it is, whether it's zone, whether it's man, whether it's a zone match, um, and guys being on the same page in terms of their drops, what they're looking for, and then also the leverage. When you're in man coverage, the leverage is critical because more times than not, you've got a piece somewhere and just making sure you're you're playing to using that piece and not not playing against it where you end up with two guys on the wrong side of, of a man was really complimentary of the inside backers against Indy. What stood out to you from that group? Yeah, I think uh, they played downhill. Like, we talked about setting the edge and building a wall, and, and we were good up front for the most part. We weren't really playing peekaboo. Guys were controlling their gaps. Um, they were physical for the most part, and the backers were getting downhill and filling the holes. Um, so I think as that continues, that's, that's probably going to be the biggest thing, is just those guys continue to play downhill. Um, obviously good to have him back, but what's the kind of balance working him back in and we can maybe expect to see him here soon? Yeah, I mean, he, he was out there yesterday working. Um, he'll, he'll work again today, and I think he looks good. Like, he's moving around good, fresh legs, right? And he's been working on his own with Frank and the training staff to get back, going through different drills. Um, and I think he had a good understanding schematically of what we were asking him to do yesterday as well. It's just, it's just going being able to take it from the meeting room to the field and all the little details and techniques that come with being able to truly execute a call. That's just something he's going to have to continue to work at to get caught up. I was going to say, how, how, I mean, he's been out a long time. I, I mean, how, it, like, is the first day maybe easier and then you have to grind through after that sometimes? You In think? terms of. In terms of just. The mental, Staying sharp and yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm sure he was really excited to be out there, right? Um, and I think he's done a good job throughout being locked in and staying engaged in those meetings. I don't think he's drifted off in the no man's land where it's starting from ground zero yesterday, right? So he's been involved. He's he's had opportunities to kind of go through things with with Bobby, it was that Kerr. Um, so I think that always helps him. And then 
I mean, just like anybody else, we get in training camp. Once you get going, man, those legs get a little bit heavier, and he's going to have to fight through some things there. But hopefully, mentally, we can keep him, keep him ahead of the wave a little bit. What did you see out of Caleb that was progress on Sunday, and what do you, and what do you see that still needs work? Yeah, I mean, there were plays he was tight there. I think the one down the field, it was just uh, he got disconnected from the guy and looked back and. The ball was underthrown and he lost contact with the guy. So there was a bunch of bunch of space there, and the guy was able to come back and he wasn't able to relocate him, right? Um, but I, I did. I thought his technique improved overall. We just got to continue to work the down the field stuff as it goes. But I mean, they tried to run an out route on him. He was quick to transition out of his break and drive on it. So I mean, you're seeing little improvements as we go, and he's just got to keep working to to become more consistent. Give up big plays, but he needs to play as opposed to just work on the practice field. How do you balance that? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, with all these guys, the more you play, the better you're going to be, the more you're going to learn, the more you're going to experience. Um, it's a fine line. I mean, we're trying to get the best 11 out there at, at a certain point in time, right? And we got to balance that as a coaching staff based on what we're doing schematically, based on what we're kind of asking those guys to do. Um, but again, you want all these guys to be able to go out there and play and learn, and because ultimately they're going to learn more on Sunday than they do out here on the practice field, just by being the the exposure and the unknown and just playing the game and everything that comes with it, where it's not scripted and they they know what's coming and how to play certain things. Even all the uh, Mario Elvin come in so quickly and and get that amount of snaps, and also how do you like? That stunt that, that you're able to do with, with he and uh, uh, Danico Autry. Yeah, I think um, I think he came in here hungry. I think he had a chip on his shoulder um, from whatever it was in Jacksonville to come in here. He, he had an opportunity to go out there and play, and I think he made the most of it. Um, I think he plays hard. I think he's attacking. It's a bigger body out there for us, which is a little bit unique to what we've had. Um, so I think he did a good job coming in here, getting ready to go, and then going in to, to execute and play. And, and I, him and Nico, they got a history. They're together in Oakland. Um, you kind of see them around the around the building. They're together. I think they got a pretty good relationship, friendship. Um, so it's no surprise they go out there on Sunday. They're able to execute something together because they have that history. They might have not repped that thing a, a, a thousand times, but there's an understanding of what the guy inside's doing, what the guy outside doing, where they can make it work. Keep Sam O done, I guess, in recent practices, in recent weeks, I guess, to, to get promoted. Yeah, he just shows up. You turn the film on, you watch the show team, um, you watch special teams, um, you notice him. He's, hard, he's going hard. He's trying to play with technique and fundamentals. Um, and if a guy practices like that, usually that, that correlates. You hope it correlates. And, and we talk about earning everything you get around here, and I think he's earned a – Earned an opportunity to hopefully go out and there, out there and play, um, and I'm excited to kind of see where he is. How much pressure? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, we'll we'll have to evaluate the reps as the game goes, um, just what those guys are doing and what we're asking them to do in in certain packages. Um, I think their roles are going to be a little bit different depending on what what we're playing. So we'll see. Maybe standing up on the edge too, as well as uh, with his hand in the dirt. Yeah, I, I think there's some versatility there with him. Um, I think he's when we when we initially saw him and liked him, it was the interior pass rush ability, and I think that's improved from training camp to now. Just watching pass rush, even I think that's improved. But yeah, I, I do think there's a little bit of versatility there. The Mario role, the Walker role, he's he's similar skill set wise, body type wise as those guys. Injuries at edge. Washington's offense has struggled so far this season. They've given up a ton of sacks. and They're pretty much last in a lot of the categories. How do you keep your guys from getting lulled to sleep by those stats and going out and executing? Yeah, I mean, good it's the NFL, man. It's week to week. Regardless, they got NFL players. They're all NFL players. Um, we understand that. We got to be ready to go regardless of who we're playing. Um, they got a lot of playmakers over there. They're, they're doing a good job of trying to find ways to give them the ball, too. You know, so... We're going to have our hands full with 17, McLaurin, with Samuel, and all the different things they're doing with him. And the running backs, they got four running backs that are good players if Robinson gets back. So, I mean, they got talent over there. We just got to make sure we're, we're focused on doing what we need to do and playing our game. And, I mean, we don't, you can't take anybody lightly in this league at all. I think stats are out, especially early in the year, man. Stats are stats. Um, we got to be ready to go. 
All the injuries you've <laughs> the ball's coming out of one, at least last week, quicker passing. Is this a week where you want to challenge your guys to come up at the line of scrimmage and, and cause a little more chatter where that the back end can can help the front end? Yeah, I think it I think it all is correlated to our scheme, what we're asking those those guys to do on first, second down, what they're able to do in terms of being pressed, being off. Um, but you do see it, like ways to get 17 and 10 the ball. They make a ton of guys miss in space. They get them the ball, and sure enough, the first guy don't tackle them, right? So we're going to have to do a good job swarming and everything else. But, yeah, as the, as in terms of our secondary, being able to change the picture on those guys, I think that's going to be critical. Thank you.